Okay, I think uh, we're good to go. Uh, thanks for coming. I think it's lunchtime, so great to be here. Uh, this is a non-technical talk. Um, my name is uh, Dimitris Andreadis, and I've been working on open source software for like 20 years now. And I spent about 15 years uh, as a contributor to the JBoss application server project. Do you know this project? We became Wildfly, then JBoss EAP, um, and then the last uh, five years uh, I'm running the, the Quarkus team at Red Hat, which just happens to have a birthday today. It's five years of, of Quarkus, uh, like in the public, and uh, an interesting detail, Quarkus was released in a place not too far from here in Neuchâtel, uh, Switzerland. And that's a picture of, of the day we put out uh, the release, so you may recognize some familiar faces there. Um, so I, let's say I got uh, into this thing like 20 years now, I was offered the red pill, that's what we said back in the day, by Mark Fleury. Mark, Mark Fleury was the founder of the JBoss project. And uh, the idea was, you know, they took the red pill and your life was transforming into something different. You go enter this fantastic world of, of open source software. Uh, and it actually, it was really special. And what was especially special for me back then, I started as a community contributor to this project that was using it for my work. And what happened was like, this ended up being like more interesting than my main job. I was working in telecoms at the time. Uh, and I was contributing more and more until the moment where I was offered actually a job to, you know, do this full time. Um, and when I entered this space, uh, I initially I was terrified because, you know, I was used to in my job, like I was like, you know, really cool developer. I don't know. I was used to in a team of 20 people. We have like two very good developers. I was probably one of them. And then suddenly I got myself into this space where where everybody was good, and not just good, like m they were brilliant, like really, really, you know, the, the, the type of people that would write the book on a technology, you know, go to conferences, present. So I was terrified initially, and, you know, I had to catch up a lot. But after a while, I, it started becoming interesting to me, like how, why these people are so successful as developers? You know, what, what's special with them? Or what, what sets them apart? So I started, let's say, studying behaviors, and I actually talked to many of them, you know, informally, like, you know, what, what's your secret? You know, how you do it? How, how is that possible? And I came up with a list of, uh, let's say, traits or strategies or qualities I'd like to share it with you in case, you know, it inspire you a bit to become a bit better in what you do. Uh, and so here it is. It's seven things. So the first one is, is passion. It's, it's liking what, what you do, and that makes a lot of difference. The, the problem with passion is um, quite often we don't work on what we're passionate about. So passion is something that's some, somewhere there. I have my day job and it's, you know, it's a bit boring or something, but my passion is there and I'm trying to, to get to my passion and, uh, and, and, and do it. And, and passion is important because uh, you, you have to think that, you know, quite often you're not doing your passion, that you want to do it. And so you do it on the side or on weekends or on evenings. So if you're not passionate about this, you'll, g you'll give up easily. So, so it's important to find what, what makes you passionate, whether it's technology or even something else, right? It doesn't have to be technology or, you know, but you, you have to like what you do to, to be good at it and, you know, and you reach that point where they're paying you to do something you really like. That would be like the ideal. So passion is important, but there's this question, all right, how do I find my passion? Which brings me to the next point. Um, because you have to find it and, and focus on, on it. Um, and uh, once I, I've asked, uh, I have a, an uncle in some remote village in Greece, and he's, he, this guy was really happy, you know, for some reason he was really happy. So I, I've asked him, you know, like, you know, what's your secret? <laughs> Why are you so happy? And he told me, it's really simple actually. 
you need to do what you want. But it's super simple. Do what you want. So, which brings us to our two points. You need to know what you want and go and do it. Okay, so easier said than done. But that's the, that's the recipe of happiness, like according to my uncle. And it's also a recipe for many successful uh, developers. So, they, f they know what they want and they do to go and do it. Uh, now, one, let's say, variation here is uh, uh, if you really want to be successful in your field, somehow you have to stand up out a bit from the crowd. And, and the, the more successful, let's say, developers are able to put bets in, in, in things that are coming. So they've done a bit of research, so they figure out that, I don't know, I'll give you an example. The next big trend is AI somehow, right? <laughs> well, you know about it. And we are in this age, and somehow they, they are already talking about it. And you say, well, you know, how is this possible? So um, successful developers are early adopters or even predictors of the things that are coming. So they put a bet, they prepare, they work on it, and when the time has come, they ride the wave. So you have to yourself, you know, think a bit ahead. You know, what's the next hot thing that I want to be involved with? And if, it, if it's there already, you know, try to be an early adopter so you can, you know, have your laser focus on it because we have limited time, you know, make your time worth it, basically. So that was uh, the second thing, you know, find and do what you're passionate about. Uh, and then it's about persistence. Um, it's easy to see someone standing up here, up here and looking really cool, you know, the same. It seems everything is easy for them, but the, the, the truth is that they have actually put a lot of work behind it. And the more work they put, the less uh, it shows on them. It, it shows, you know, they're very confident talking about something, but they, they've actually worked their asses off behind the scenes to, you know, look good to you. I don't know, you probably heard like about Steve. Uh, Steve Jobs and how well he presented, but he, he actually spent a lot of time preparing. So persistence is realizing that, you know, what, what you like to do and you have to do it well takes time, takes effort. So uh, imagine you want to run a marathon, right? You just not, cannot run a marathon by just running a long run in the weekend. It's not possible. You have to run in the middle of the week, you know, like two times or even three times and do, you know, uh, train your body, gain strength to be able to do that, you know, maybe run 5K, 10K, half a marathon to, to actually get to run a marathon. Um, so, I mean, the secret there is, uh, again, you might not be doing your passion now, but you want to get to it, you know, find a way to, to work on it. So let's say you work, you have a standard job, which is okay, but you like this technology. So try to persuade your managers that, oh, it's, it's pretty cool to um, try this library or contribute to this project because we're using it, so we want to get the knowledge. Or you're a student and you want to work on something, you know, make it a project. So make it a part of your everyday uh, routine, if, if possible. And that will give you more time to, to work on your eventual passion and maybe your future work. Um, and you need time because you need to be a master, you know, like if, if you want to persuade others that you're expert on something, you, you better be one. So you want to become a master. And, um, and the truth is that now there's so much opportunity out there. Uh, back, back in my days, I don't know, you wanted to develop a, a Unix daemon and there was no manual. You know, maybe there was a book coming out of Stevens, like, I don't know, in the... Uh, early 2000, you know, how to do it, but th there wasn't much option. And to be honest, back in the day, if you really want to do cool stuff, you have, you have to immigrate. You have to go to, I don't know, US to work for Microsoft or Borland, or, the, or those people, and it was hard. You know, the code was closed, but that's not the case anymore. There's so much opportunity, so much technology. There's tons of open source projects out there that you can learn from. Uh, analyzing the code, uh, that, that's what got me involved also in this, in this uh, adventure. I studied other people's code and, and I learned really a lot from it. So, so uh, may the source be with you. Uh, actually, in our days, the result, the 
the challenge is the opposite. There's just too much information. So then the challenge is to filter out the parts that are useful and relevant and not waste on time, you know, death scrolling and, and stuff like that. So um, it's out there. It's up to you to, to go and find it. And one like very, you know, pronounced characteristic of successful developers is the motivation. This, let's say, ability to, you know, go and, you know, do stuff. Don't don't talk about it, you know, just try it out, you know. Um, send a pull request, start a new project. Uh, I've seen people that, you know, you throw them into a new code base and they figure it out, you know. They figure out like how it works, what's missing, where they can add value. And this is something that has to be in your mind always, like what is my added value? Like how I contribute, how I make things better, what's missing and, and just go and do it. Don't expect others to tell you, oh, you have to do this, this, this. The best thing happens when they come from you. And then you're vested, you, you know, you want to do it. Like the people that are organize this thing here, you know, they're vo volunteers. And no one, you know, told them, oh, you, you, you need to come and organize this conference tomorrow. They came up with the idea. They found the people, they brought the people together. They, they, they did it. Uh, and that's a nice um, uh, pass to my next uh, topic here, which is like people. When I created those slides, and it's been years now, <laughs> honestly, I had this like number six in my list. Now, if I put do it again, I'll put it like really high up, because what I've learned all those years was that um, although I started in IT thinking, oh, this is great, it's computer and me, I will win the computer and I make it do what I want, and it's my perfect world that I control and I can be alone, you know, and I'm fine I, as an introvert or whatever. But I found out really quickly that you need to work with teams to make great stuff. So if you look at, I don't know, J-Boss, Quarkus, there are dozens of people participating in those projects. And Quarkus, like just talking about this, uh, we had more than 900 contributors to the project. So those people need to be coordinated. They have to come together. They have to learn to work uh, together. Uh, so whatever you do, it's important to figure out who are the people that can help you um, advance. Uh, and usually, usually those people are better than you, right? Um, so whether it's uh, teams, bosses, partners, whatever, you know, find the right people uh, and get away from toxic uh, situations if possible. Um, learning to, to work with other people that are better than you can be hard sometimes especially in those online settings where uh, things can be impersonal. So you go in, a, you know, you discuss on, on GitHub so something and you put a pull request and you're buried. You say, oh, that's a stupid idea. You know, I've never seen such a stupid thing. Um, and it happens. It's not nice, but it happens. But you have to realize that most of the time is someone attacking this argument. They don't attack you. It's not personal. We take it as personal. But it's not personal, so you have to develop a bit of a thick skin uh, to survive in, in, in this world. Uh, and uh, I used to do like a lot of uh, uh, protocol design, you know, systems talking to each other. And what I learned back then was if you want to communicate with another system, there it's, so, so what is important is you have to be conservative in what you emit and accepting on, on what you receive. And when you do that, you have a greater chance of establishing communication with another system. It's the same with people, you know? Try to be conservative what you say and accepting to, you know, to what they say to you. And that increases the chances of, uh, you know, working together. And, you know, I, I told you about this, but you, you need to be a bit lucky. You know, some things are just pure luck. So you came to a conference today, and somehow you met your future boss or you met a future colleague. You know, it wasn't planned, you know, you just happened to talk to some random person in the elevator and, you know, you came up with an idea or something. So this is a lack. But the fact that you're actually here, it says you're actually doing something for your luck. So it's, uh, I quote Seneca here, 
when preparation means opportunity. So you have to position your, yourself to receive luck. And with enough luck, uh, things will align and things will happen. And this has happened, happened to me so many times over, you know, in my career. Uh, again, another example, I was at Devox in Belgium. In Quarkus, we were looking for a strategy for um, uh, AI. And many people, very capable people, and we couldn't figure it out. And then suddenly, you know, I saw a presentation about a new project called Langchain 4J, and it immediate, immediately ticked in me, like, oh, that's what we're missing. So I found the people, uh, I explained the vision, we worked together. Since October, Quarkus has a nice AI story. You know, it can do very nice things. So again, it's luck, but I was there, they were there, somehow it, it worked out. And with that, th those are the key strategies, you know. If, if you want to make a, a picture of a slide, this is a, the money slide, so to speak. So I put them there, you know, and then I reflected a bit and quickly I realized that, okay, I studied like op successful open source developers, but actually those traits have nothing to do with open source or, or even development. So these are traits of people, successful professionals that more or less can take a step back, you know, understand the environment, understand themselves and see, see what, what they want, where they want to be, you know, make a plan and stick to it, you know, make adjustments of the way, but, you know, make a plan and, and try, try to, to make it. And, and, and that's, that's like the, 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 the recipe. Uh, it takes work, obviously, right? It takes work, but it's, it's like a system and you can follow it. And I, I think it can help you with wha whatever you're doing there. And, and in, in any case, you know, you might think, okay, well, this is hard, but, you know, just have a bit of faith in you and, you know, believe because everyone's special and, you know, everyone can do it. So you can do it. And I hope that was useful for you. And uh, I think I'm done. Thank you very much. And uh, also, uh, if you're interested in Quarkus, uh, there's a, a presentation at one o'clock uh, by Holly, if you want to get introduced, and we also have a booth. I'll be down like for most of the time if you want to discuss anything. Thank you very much.